Amid the chaos of war, a beacon of hope emerges in the serene city of Assisi. This light, born of deep friendship, is fueled by the shared experience of individuals of different faiths coming together in search of meaning and understanding. You can't have peace without friendship. I have followed the situation in the Holy Land now for, for decades. There were many attempts at using religion to bring people together. At a certain point, point those efforts failed. In other words, they didn't go beyond a certain point. With the recent events following October 7th, many people turned to me and say, so have all your relations come to a standstill? And I said, not at all. And they said, why not? Well, part of it because my relations aren't exclusive to the Holy Land, but even it, within the Holy Land. The reason is because once friendship is deeply established, then things from the outside are not going to shake it up. Since Pope St. John Paul II, Assisi has been at the center of interfaith dialogue. Led by Rabbi Alon Gashen and supported by various representatives of the Catholic Church and leaders of other faiths. I know that some are afraid of interreligious dialogue, but I understand that fear has been humanity's first companion without God. I know that when I'm afraid, it's because I'm hiding. So I believe that we shouldn't be afraid of brothers and sisters who have a different expression of faith. For several years, Assisi has been considered as the city of peace and encounter. Assisi is the city of interreligious dialogue, the city of dialogue. And for this, we must give thanks. Certainly to St. John Paul II, who nearly 40 years ago brought all the world's religious leaders here to speak about peace. But Assisi's greatest thanks must always go to its most famous fellow citizen, St. Francis. In response to religious hatred and years of misunderstandings, Rabbi Alan Goshen is seeking to establish a museum for interreligious dialogue called the House of Friendship and Hope, right in the heart of the city of Francis. Having it right here in Assisi, a place like this can further ensure the spirit of hospitality and effectively and visibly convey the possibility of dialogue. Moreover, it will primarily be a place of prayer. So, what could be better than engaging in dialogue starting from our reference to the Lord? If this reality will be born near the Portuncola, it is certainly a sign of testimony that there are still men and women who, I would say with a strong word, fight for what really matters. So as a European and survivor of genocide in Bosnia, and as a Grand Mufti of Bosnia in peace and in war, I am glad to be invited today in Assisi to witness an initiative for an institution or for a project that would devote, that will be devoted to the idea of interfaith dialogue. And I hope and pray that everyone who joins and supports and participates and visits the house will be similarly touched to be an instrument of friendship, peace, and prayer. I will not die before I see that the Holy Land is the Holy Peace and not the Holy War. Amen, amen, And amen. this is what we have to work on.